It's been their home for the last week, but today protesters were packing up, bringing to an end one of the longest and most disruptive protests in Bristol's history. I'm for it to a certain extent, but only if it had lasted for about five hours, not five days. I mean, it wasn't that bad and it's, you know, it's just for a cause and I think it wasn't, I, I think it's okay. It's hard to figure it out. But all they do is they cause a lot of trouble for the locals. On the whole, what they're doing is, is really positive, but I can see that it's a massive inconvenience for people, so I don't know whether they need to make it so that different people are inconvenienced at different times. The culmination of this week-long demonstration ended for some in court. Such was the volume of protesters that queues of up to an hour stretched out the doors. And once again, a heavy police presence was on standby. James Brown, who was registered blind, was one of 16 people charged with blocking a public highway. His daughter Alice accompanied him in front of the judge. Honestly, if I really take a step back, I just can't believe that it's come to this. What a situation that we're in, you know. I, to be completely honest, my heart is broken that he's, he's put himself through this. In one hearing after five climate change protesters pleaded not guilty to willfully obstructing a highway, the judge tried to set a date for the trial. She commented to them, I hope none of you are jetting off. This caused a few chuckles in the public gallery until one of the defendants said, this is no laughing matter. He that openeth and no man shutteth. And shutteth. It was perhaps fitting that some of the protesters chose this final day to attend a church service at St Mary's Redcliffe. A chance to reflect, ask for forgiveness and pray for change. Then people are being arrested does that fit in with the same Christian morals? Yeah, I think for uh, Christians, and particularly Jesus, we see him challenging the structures that are unjust and unfair. And obviously there are times where the disruptions caused hurt and pain to other people, and uh, we'd want to apologise for that. But I think it's important that that message gets across, that this is a really important thing to take a stand on. As the diggers came in this afternoon to reopen the bridge, protesters told me how they were pleased with what they had achieved here. I think we have to be very mindful that, you know, that there's also other things that are going on and to respect that space. And I think EXA is also very much about respecting that. I suppose many would say that you haven't respected necessarily the space of everyone in the city. You've closed up a lot of roads, you've caused a lot of traffic problems. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of pounds have been spent by the police. What would you say to all of that? Well, I suppose it, it depends on how you look at it. It's a very sh short-term view. Because I think if you think about what the longer-term effects of climate change are, against just closing the road for today, to make people really be become more aware of what this is leading to, I feel that you have to put a balance on it. Look at it from well, the longer it's term. Been, it's been five days, hasn't it? It's been five days. And I, it could be even there could be a potential for it to be much more if people are not going to take action. What this action has accomplished is harder to quantify. A meeting with the mayor has been heralded a success, but for a city which has always been accepting of protest and improving the environment, this disruption will have frustrated many. Yet it will undoubtedly be remembered for years to come. Max Walsh, ITV News, Bristol.